Hi, my name is George Gindia. I live in Irvine, California with my wife Cheryl and two young daughters, Jacqueline and Eva. I couldn't make it back this weekend for the Coach Jack Memorial, but I'm with you in spirit and I wanted to offer my personal tribute to a great man. First of all, thanks to Mark Lyberg for spearheading the Coach Jack Memorial. Jack Castagnola is one of the greatest high school football coaches in Michigan history. He built a premier program at Trenton and had undefeated teams in 1966, 73, and 75. Back then, Trenton played Class A competition against the biggest schools in the state. There are many stories beyond wins and losses that reveal the character and impact of Coach Jack. I will touch on some of the lessons learned. High school coaches around the country follow the principles espoused by Coach Jack and demonstrate a similar commitment and passion. Their influence on young men and women is immense. This message is a tribute to Coach and my teammates. It is also a shout out to our Trenton student athletes about the tradition of excellence that Coach Jack created. My experience with Coach began growing up in eCourse. One of my neighborhood buddies was Sammy Castagnola, Jack's nephew. Sammy was the son of Jack's brother, Sam Sr. When I was 10, Big Sam took me and Junior to a Trenton game. It made a huge impression on me. I dusted off a scrapbook my Aunt Sylvia put together and found a, new, a few nuggets to share with you about Coach Jack and our 1974 and 75 teams. The excellence achieved by our 75 team is worth revisiting. In 74, Trenton was coming off a 9-0 record in number three state ranking. Two of the heroes from that team were Joe Dixon and current coach Bobby Zarnecki. During our tough August two days, I became familiar with a couple of Coach Jack's favorite lines. When the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And when you get knocked down, you get back up. We won our opener at Wyandotte, followed by a tough loss at Plymouth Salem. We learned some valuable lessons. Coach Jack was big on senior leadership, and Captains Bill Allen and John Dahlquist were excellent. Jack played for Woody Hayes in high school, and he loved upon the rock. We ended up 7-2 after dropping our final against undefeated Riverview. Coach Jack was always interested in what we were doing outside of football, particularly going to class, getting good grades, and staying out of trouble. If you messed up, you were quickly summoned into his office. Coach was extremely excited about our 75 team, his 12th season at Trenton. During August camp, a highlight was scrimmaging against Westland John Glenn, coached by Lloyd Carr, before he landed at Michigan. We dedicated the season to teammate Dan Atkinson, who was tragically paralyzed in a car accident. Coach had a top-notch staff. In addition to assistants Jim Whiteside and Eric Federico, Art Waginka and Don Warner coached the JVs. Coach taught us there was a greater good in the game of football, beyond victory or defeat. He looked at football as a metaphor for life. He preached that you develop strong work habits, discipline, and character that will serve you well throughout life. If you screw up, don't dwell on it. Get yourself ready for the next opportunity and redeem yourself. Keep your poise. He coached mental toughness. You get knocked down, you get back up. 1975 was the inaugural season for the state playoffs. Only four teams would qualify in each of the four divisions. Our goals were to win the Suburban 8, go undefeated, and win the state championship. Coach Jack unleashed our offense in the opening game route of Wyandotte Roosevelt. 39 to 0. Greg Castagnola passed for almost 200 yards and completed 10 of 11. Jeff Benarek and I caught several TD bombs. There was a huge buzz around town. We were loaded. Our coaches taught sound fundamentals. We worked hard at blocking and tackling. Our playbook was not deep. Our defense was aggressive and relentless. In all phases of the game, we learned how to execute and hit. Coach Jack did not like day games. The two Dearborn schools played home games on Friday afternoon. They turned out to be our toughest contest. Win number two was a close one at Edsel Ford. After touchdowns, we typically ran or passed for two, but we still practiced extra points. Following our blowout win against Plymouth Salem, I lined up to kick one with Greg Holding. He got steamrolled by a couple of our guys. The top quarterback in the state had just suffered a hairline ankle fracture. Our next game was only three days away against undefeated Dearborn. Greg laced up my dad, John Gindia's black high tops from his playing days at Michigan and led us to victory. Down 22 to 16 with eight minutes to go on the, 
On fourth down, Duncan Allen punched it in from the two. The final score was 24 to 21. Both teams scored three TDs, but our two point conversions made the difference. Dearborn kicked the extra points. Coach said this after the game, Dearborn was the biggest high school team I've seen in 30 years of coaching. We never lost our poise after falling behind 14 to nothing. That's the mark of a great team. Win number eight was at Livonia Bentley. It was Halloween and some idiot in the stands threw a can of tear gas that exploded and sent dozens of our fans to a local hospital for treatment. In our final game, in front of a record home crowd, we demolished Riverview, 63 to nothing. Coach kept the score down by having me kick eight extra points, and Duncan Allen kicked number nine. When asked, do you believe Trenton poured it on? Hall of Famer Don Lesnar, coach of Riverview, said, no, absolutely not. Before the second quarter was half over, they were shooting everyone into the game. He added, if Trenton isn't the finest high school team in the state, I would like to see who is. They're certainly the best high school team I've ever seen. The game was on TV, and I have this photo of Coach Jack and me being interviewed. The smile on Coach's face says it all. We were ranked number one in the state at the season-ending Associated Press poll. We missed out on the playoffs. It was a huge disappointment, but we were undefeated and felt unbeatable. Livonia Franklin finished with one loss and ended up winning the state Class A playoff against Traverse City. We were strong in all phases of the game and averaged 35 points. We didn't punt much, but Lybrook averaged over 40 yards a kick. Our D, led by Ken Mitchell and Benaric, pitched four shutouts and allowed only six points a game. One non-football note, after our victory in the 1976 state hockey finals, Trenton's first, Coach Jack was the first person in our locker room to congratulate us. Eleven of our 31 guys played college ball, many on full rides. Bernard for Bo Schembechler at Michigan, Castagnola for Woody at Ohio State, Todd Carnicom at Northwestern, Ron Bayes, Allen and me at Western Michigan, Lybrook at, at Dayton, Steve Jondo at Eastern Michigan, Ray Block at Ohio U, Bob Dolson at, at Albion, Jay McDonald at Saginaw Valley State. What greater testament to Jack's influence and success than to see one-third of his 75 team go on to college on scholarship and play competitively at that level. My brother John was an All-Stater on, on Jack's 1980 League Championship team and then went on to play for Bo at Michigan. Jack Castagnola's example and influence has molded hundreds of young men. I honor Jack every day when I try to be a better husband, a better father, a better citizen, a better Christian, a better leader. Those are the lessons I learned from my dad and Jack, both members of the Michigan High School Coaches Hall of Fame. To my teammates and peers, it's up to us to promote the legacy of our great coach and mentor. Coach Jack dedicated his life to, in helping us to grow up to be good men and citizens. To Coach Czar and the 2018, best wishes for a successful season. Thank you.